Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, love, laugh, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Fay on UBNRadio.com. And welcome. My name is Dr. Marissa, and you're listening to my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at Naturally High Noon on UBN Radio and every Thursday now at 7 on my newly syndicated NBC News Radio talk show, KCAA. AM 1050. And this is a show about hope and happiness. So there's no angry ranting, no political rhetoric, no gossip, no scandal, and no K words, no Kardashian talk. (laughs) Instead, I want you to focus on your own reality show and how to be happy. 88% of the time. I am your host, Dr. Marissa Pay. And thanks to my station managers, Tony, Brett, and Paul, and sound engineers, Garl... Garrett, (laughs) Carlos, and Mia at both my UBN and KCAA broadcasting families, and my assistant producer for my call-in shows, Jarvis Essex. (laughs) And it's my birthday on Sunday, even though I am ageless. But listen for special birthday giveaways at the end of today's show. All right. Um, First of all, I want to give a shout out to um, a very special woman in Alaska, uh, Crystal, the smart bus driver in Skagway, for finding and making sure my wallet got back to me. For those of you uh, who didn't know, I was on a month-long family sojourn with my uh, brother from Hong Kong and his family, and then to... um, uh, Canada for my mom to celebrate my mom's 80th birthday. Happy birthday, mom. And we went on a Disney cruise to Alaska. And I also would like to send out a healing breath prayer to my brother today as he goes through some some tests. So hopefully uh, the markers are off and he does not have stomach cancer. So we're just praying on that one. But Uh, For those of you who have asked, I've gotten a couple messages on, you know, what is your doctorate in? What is your, you know, are you a medical doctor? And just to clear up all of the perceptions or misperceptions, I am not a medical doctor. I don't uh, believe in over-prescribing medication. Although, if, if you notice my voice, I, I am in touch with my inner male. I did catch some anti, uh, bacterial infection while I was up north, but is not Ebola, if you've been listening to the news. So I am thankful for the antibiotics. But no, I, I actually have a PhD. And for those of you who don't know what PhD stands for, you know what BS stands for, right? That's Bachelor of Science or Bull Shiitake. And then MS is Masters of Science, which is just more shiitake. And then PhD just stands for piled higher and deeper. <laughs> Boing. I didn't put that one in. But uh, I, I actually have a PhD in organizational psychology. So I get to talk about pretty much anything that has to do with human dynamics. And whether it's power, politics, ego, happiness, unhappiness, stress, Uh, balance. And so that's why I have this show. So welcome to it. And today is actually it's that time of the month where I take calls from people who want more balance in their life. And so first we have on the line, I believe, Ardella from San Diego. Welcome, Ardella. Good morning, Ardella. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And as with all of my callers, I'm going to do just a little bit of an assessment. And so I want you to just put your, are you driving? No. Good. Okay. Feet on the ground, palms up. Gently close your eyes and take a deep breath in. And just releasing the breath, letting go of all the stories and the drama. And just with the next breath, breathing into your heart. And then gently opening your eyes. And let me know in the area of health and how you feel about your body temple and your um, 
uh, how you feel about your body and where you are there on a scale of one to 10, 10 is happy and one is not, where would you say you are on that scale? A five. Okay, good. And then taking another breath and looking at relationships. So relationships with others on a scale of one to 10, where would you say you are there? About a seven. A seven. And last but not least, with your job or career or what you do to make a living, what would you say your scale is? Between a three and a four. Between a three and a four. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And I would like you to tell me why, what would, why... Why is it a three and not a two? So what is good about your job right now? Well, I enjoy what I do. Okay. Um, so I, I, I enjoy the field. Mm-hmm. I think I am just in a place where I don't like the way they do things. Okay. It's very, very stressful. All right. So what would be, okay, so tell me sort of, in a day you get to work and mm-hmm. what are the things that you are afraid are going to have happen that you don't like? One, that I'm going to get fired. Okay. <laughs> um, and that I'm not going to hit my, my numbers or metrics. Okay. Um, and then that I won't, you know, get the number of placements that I need okay. on a weekly basis. All right. And how long have you had this job? Uh, three years. Three years. Mm-hmm. And um, you can be honest with me. Mm-hmm. Um, on the scale of one to ten, how well do you think you are doing? How hard are you trying to make the numbers work and to make your quotas and to all of that? Are you doing everything you can possibly do to make sure your side of the street is covered on a scale of 1 to 10? 8. 8. Okay, so that's pretty high. Mm -hmm. Um, On a scale of 1 to 10, from the feedback that you've gotten in the last three years, where would you say people would rate you with that same question? About an 8. Okay. So we have here... A situation where you're doing the very best that you can Mm -hmm. to the best of your ability and for whatever reason the metrics by which you're being measured on how successful you are in the job is not working correct okay so is it possible that the expectations for this particular job are out of whack with other competitors are or are they the same i would would yes that it's possible that it is out of whack okay so that would be my first thing to do is to go out and do a little research and find out if in this field and it's you know wonderful thing about technology is you can google anything And eventually you'll get some real information (laughs) if you find more than, you know, 60% agreeing. Actually, my niece works for Google, so we don't say Google it in our house. We say Christina it. (laughs) (laughs) But if you find out that the numbers or the expectations in your particular company, it is possible that in your particular company they are above and beyond what the norm is. And if that is true, then wouldn't it be uh, acting on your own behalf to investigate other places which may have a more realistic number? Yes. Okay. So you've had three years of a good track record where you've, you've been there three years. So that's, that's saying something. Okay, but you know that you don't want to go in every day afraid that you're going to lose your job. So you can either go every day and be afraid that you're going to lose your job and keep going until, unfortunately, the law of attraction says that what you keep dwelling on becomes reality. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the law of attraction is kind of like the law of gravity. Whether you believe it or not, it works. 
If you jump off of a cliff, you're going to fall to the ground, whether you believe in gravity or not. So there's enough evidence now that, and, and it makes sense. Like if I say um, I'm having a bad day, you ever notice that more things happen that make it even a worse day? Absolutely. Okay. And I have clients who I will stop. In fact, I was on the phone with a, a gentleman this morning where I said, this is the last time you tell this story. Mm-hmm. And you start the day over at any time. And then it begins to shift. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I want you to start going to work and stop saying, I don't know if I'm going to lose my job. Okay. Okay. So that's the first thing. I am going to work to find out if there's something else that I'm not doing that could make the numbers come easier. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I want you to say that before you go to bed. So your dreams will be a source and a bed of cre- creativity. I do that now. I Before I go to bed, I say, inspire me with anything that I need to be writing, saying, talking. And I'll have, th- that's how radio came. That was never my plan. All right. And I'm having a blast, as you can tell. So, so I want you to purposefully start planting in your mind, taking away that old BS system, the belief system that says, you know, I'm lucky to have a job. I don't want to lose this job. I'm never going to be finding a job if I lose this one. I really love what I do, but maybe I'm not good at it. And I must be doing something wrong because uh, I'm not meeting the numbers. And I'm not trying hard enough because you already told me that that's BS. Mm -hmm. You are, and I believe you, 80% of the time, you are doing the best of your ability in and eight is a great number. It means good fortune in Chinese. So I believe you. You, you might want to check at work and say, you know, I really love my work. I hope you know that I enjoy working here. I ha- am struggling with the numbers. And if there's anything you think that I, am, I have a blind spot towards, please let me know so that I can do better. Or please let me know so I can be win-win for both of us. And that way you are communicating to your superiors or your supervisors, or even your peers, that you are willing. Because there's nothing better. I do corporate consulting. And there's nothing better when there's 80% will and 80% skill. That's what I call a job person match. So when there's a job person match, there's 80% will and 80% skill. So whether it's on a, it, I don't think it's a will thing. There might be a skill. There might be something that you could do more or learn more or go to school for or take a certificate course that might make it easier for you to get those numbers. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Do any of those trigger anything? Um, I have definitely had conversations with my superiors and they recognize that and so they and they have you know um recognized my effort and you know things that i'm doing to try and hit those numbers and they kind of um also see that you know it's it's going to be hard from the position that i'm in to um reach the numbers that i need to get to so they realize that as well um but those are just direct managers. And mm-hmm. So it's just when, right, I when think the, of what comes from the top down to them, <coughs> right, is where you know, is where it all lies. But, right. Uh, but yes, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah, because you are way more than those numbers. Mm-hmm. And my guess is the stress is probably feeding into the five in your health. Because when you're stressed, you don't properly hydrate, you don't properly eat, you don't properly exercise, you don't properly do anything because stress seems to have this overwhelming, over-consuming ability to stop everything else that you need to do. Right. Yeah, I'm, and I feel burned out. Ah, uh-huh. Okay. So, um, how many glasses of water do you drink a day? Oh, not enough. I actually just yesterday started a detox program. Perfect. Okay, so that's a good start. Uh, Getting more um, water intake and trying to, you know, just at least turn it around um, as far as the health uh, part of it goes. Great. How how, um, 
do you do you ever what how much contact are you in with nature I love nature, so I try and get out to the beach or go hiking or something. How like often? That. Um, probably about three days a week. Oh, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on those three days a week, I'd like you to not think about work. Okay. <laughs> Just completely not think about work. Look at the trees. Look at the flowers. Um, one of my teachers, Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, my big brother, says that flowers are really God smiling at us. So for nothing else, we can just enjoy the smiles as we're walking along and, and just be. I just watched, um, I'm recovering from whatever this is I caught up in Alaska, but uh, I watched that movie yesterday, Lucy, and I was, you know, it's an advertisement for my belief system, which is great, but it, it, the emphasis on, you know, how we have become a society of achievers and doers and havers and, and, and competitors and, you know, lack and limitation and, and really what life is, is about being. So I want you to, to make that, those three hours really about being and just enjoying the fact that you have a job, that you have um, a body, that you have 70% good relationships. That's a lot more than what usually calls in. <laughs> okay, so that's something to celebrate right there. Well, that's because I have very few relationships, and the ones that I do have, they're good. Oh, hey, there, it could be worse. It could be no relationships <laughs> or a lot of relationships that are bad. Okay, yeah, so so absolutely. so I want you to start seeing the bright side. I I have a feeling that I want you to put on your life jacket with a silver lining, because I can see the 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 negativity creeping in, or the yes buts creeping into your thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that needs to be smog checked. So we're doing a hard, uh, we're doing a uh, you need a soft reset. We're gonna do a soft reset. I'm pressing both of your buttons on your on your uh, life phone <laughs> okay and you're gonna have a heart come up instead of an apple and I want you to really start every single day with eight gratitudes Okay. every single day with eight gratitudes you're gonna have eight you're on this detox so you're you're, you're gonna continue th your three um, walks in the park and mm -hmm. uh, if I can be uh, so bold to ask I, I would like to prescribe at least three orgasms a week because those are related <laughs> to health and wholeness. <laughs> mm -hmm. The studio I just, just yes. <laughs> <laughs> my, ass my assistant producer just like <laughs> lost it. Sorry, and Garrett is not commenting at all. But but if you know, I do a weekly show on sexual healing with Dr. Marissa, and I want to practice what I teach. But I am so serious, along with the health regimen of water, gratitude, and nature, communing with Mother Nature, I'm adding orgasm. So however you want to get it, make sure it's safe. But three mm -hmm. orgasms a week, and uh, and I'm going to add one more thing. Try to laugh 30 seconds a day. God bless my mom. She's, she has Parkinson's. And she was, she was telling me what the regimen was with her pills and everything. And she said that her doctor prescribed 30 seconds of laughing a, week, uh, a day. And I'm like, that is so brilliant. So I am adding that, thanks mom, to the repertoire of Dr. Marissa's prescription for happiness 88% of the time. Okay. Does that sound like a deal? It does. So what's your homework? I need to start each day mm -hmm. with eight gratitudes. Perfect. Um, three orgasms per week. Yay. Good. She can remember that. <laughs> <laughs> more water. Yes. Um, nature. Yes. Uh, get, get out more nature and don't think about work while I'm there. Right. And just be in the present moment. Yes. And laugh for 30 seconds a day. Yeah. Exactly. Because the, the, the bottom line, Ardella, mm -hmm. is that you are a precious child of the universe. Mm -hmm. You are way more than your job. That is just a very small portion of who you are and what you're here on the planet to do. So I want you to know that whether it's this job or a different job, it's always this and better. So whatever it is that you're supposed to learn from this job, you're going to learn. Mm -hmm. And then whatever happens next, next 
in whatever that next chapter is, whether it's a different job at the same company, whether it's a different job at a different company, whether it's a whole new vocation, whatever it is, if you walk in that gratitude, if you walk in that faith and choice that you do live in a friendly universe and that everything that happens to you is for your divine and best good, then it's all flowers. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for calling in Ardella from San Diego. And peace and blessings to you. Make sure you email me and keep in touch. All right, thank you. And that was Ardella. For those of you who have just tuned in, you're listening to another call-in episode where Dr. Marissa, the kinder and gentler Dr. Laura, helps with the life tire tune-up and smog check of BS belief systems so that you can be happy 88% of the time. And this is Take My Advice. I'm not using it every Tuesday at noon at UBN Radio and Thursdays on KCAA AM 1050. And I do believe it's time for a little um, spot from our sponsor of today's show, the Long Beach Jazz Festival. It's the 27th annual Long Beach Jazz Festival, Saturday and Sunday, August 9th and 10th at Rainbow Lagoon Park in Long Beach, California. On Saturday, see Tyrese, Ramsey Lewis, Rochelle Farrell, Najee, Michael Lington, and Jesse Porkins III. On Sunday, Layla Hathaway, Will Dowdy, Al Jerome, Daly, Hiroshima, Al Williams Jazz Society with Ronnie Laws, Wilton Felder, and more. And a tribute to Wayne Henderson. Call Rainbow Promotions at 562-424-0013 or go online to Long Beach Jazz festival.com and we're back and you're listening to take my advice i'm not using it get balanced with dr marissa and yes it is my birthday week so oh <laughs> thank you tony and garrett yes i do love my birthday now just to keep the record straight i am not 29 or 39. I am ageless. <laughs> so don't ask how old I am. Um, and if you've missed any of my past, oh, but um, I am happy that uh, the Long Beach Jazz Festival sponsored me because I'm going to go. So please join me there. Uh, August 10th is my actual birthday and I will be there listening to Al Jarreau and Hiroshima and Tyrese and I'm uh, very grateful to Rainbow Promotions for making that possible for my birthday gift and please do visit them online longbeachjazzfestival.com for a ticket there. Shout out to Tanya at Rainbow Productions. All right, and if you've missed any of my past 111 shows with a plethora of past Oprah guests from Fran Drescher to mega best-selling authors like Dr. John Gray, Dr. Pat Allen, Don Miguel Ruiz, Marianne Williamson, Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, Melody Beattie and Janine Roth, and even Leave It to Be the Beaver, Jerry Mathers, super lawyer Gloria Allred, and the Cove Dolphin activist Rick O'Berry. You can find all of my past illuminating interviews with them where I go back to where it all began. Um, find the free podcast link on my website, the number 4balance.org, or subscribe on iTunes and YouTube. All right. And we are ready for our next, we're not ready, we're almost ready for our next caller. Um, I, I, sh I actually call them victims sometimes, but uh, they're actually volunteers that are calling in. <laughs> Thank you, Carrot, for um, their call in. And while we're waiting, we will go right to my moniker, Dr. Marissa, the Asian Oprah, which is a very honorable moniker because of my many past Oprah guests and the fact that I won the Asian Entrepreneur of the Year Award in 2012. And just in, um, we can actually applause for this, I just got told by email that uh, I have been awarded another award from the Asian Heritage Society. So I am the 2014 Asian Heritage Award for Best in Business entrepreneurship so thank you very much more details to follow where you can join me at my table 
Uh, it will be in San Diego at some fancy schmancy hotel or something. But uh, in honor of my birthday, I wanted to do some giveaways. So first of all, I have here a book that just got launched by Michelle Patterson. And it is called Women Change the World. And it's a signed copy by me because I am on page 154. And I talk about um, why women need to learn things from men. So please do pick up this book. You can get it from Amazon. Uh, but if you want to win this free copy, then please do uh, email me. Here I am. Da -da -da -da. I'm going to put that on camera. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. So uh, I would be happy to sign it for my birthday gift, email for balance.org. And at the end of the show, I will be giving more things away because I have to live up to that, Dr. Mercy, the Asian Oprah. And we now have on the line Larry from Sacramento. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Larry. We missed your applause. There we go. Welcome to the show. Glad. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So as in all of my callers, I'd like to spend a second just to get centered with you. If you, you're not driving, are you? No, I'm not driving. Awesome. If you could put your feet on the ground. Uh-huh. And palms up and gently close your eyes, taking a deep breath in through your nose. And releasing the breath. Soft shoulders, soft ankles, soft knees, and in through the nose, into heart chakra, and releasing all the stories and the drama. Great. And one more deep breath in. And on the out breath, opening your eyes and joining me in the studio. All right. So, Larry, on a scale of 1 to 10... I'm going to ask you a couple questions on how balanced you are in different areas of your life. So we'll start with health. Actually, mm -hmm. let's start with relationships. Your relationships with other people outside of yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being not so good, 10 being fantabulous, where are you? I'm in the middle. All right. Uh, five. Five. We'll come back to that one. On a scale of 1 to 10, with health, your body, your, your healthiness, your well-being, on a scale of one, 1 to 10, where are you with that? About a 7. About a 7. All right, good. And then last but not least, with your career, your job, or what you do uh, to make the bills go away, <laughs> uh, where are you on that? I would say about a 7 as well. Mm. Good. Let's go to relationships then. Mm -hmm. How's that sound? <laughs> that sounds okay. All right. So let's talk about how's your relationship with yourself, first of all? How do you feel about yourself? Pretty good? Ten? One? Um, I feel great about myself. Okay. You know, actually, you know. All right. All right. So um, family or friends is the five. If you If I took family relationships out of the equation, would relationships go up or down? If you took family out or if you took friends out? Uh, you pick. Um, if you took probably family out, it would probably increase. Okay. So it's family relationships that are weighing. Correct. Okay. So let's, uh, without using any names, mm -hmm. um, how would you, the one, is it one person that's really, or is it a few? Uh, it's, it's, it's a couple. It's a couple of people. And mm -hmm. are they in your immediate family? Yes. And how do they have the power to bring that number down? The power to bring the number down. I'll make sure I'm understanding the okay. question. Could you so, rephrase it? Sure. So the rest of your relationships are pretty around a seven. But because mm -hmm. of these guys, these two, or gals, mm -hmm. It brings it down to a seven, which means it's probably around a three to bring the averages down. Okay. So what are they doing or saying or being that is bringing your number down? Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> I, I would probably say not allowing uh, my inner core, meaning speaking to my, me and my wife, to be, a, to be um, 
how can I say it, to stand on our own without trying to, you know, know all of the things that are going on in our in our Family. private affairs of life, if that makes sense. <laughs> yes. So so can I ask, is it your mom? It's not my mom. My mom's deceased. Okay. So c- c- is it okay if we talk about exactly who they are? Yeah, hold on. Let me, yeah, one second. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a phone. All right. Mm-hmm. So it would be uh it would be uh mother in law and grandmother. Mother in law and grandmother. So your mu- your wife's mother and her mother. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they wanna know everything that's going on or just tell me give me like where the where you get unbalanced with them with. Um, probably right now I'm living with my you know, my mother in law is living with us right now. That's part okay. of the issue. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> um, the, you know, in Chinese, there's the symbol for woman is a. Yeah, I know we're on radio, so you really can't see this, but you you trust me. The 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 one is a. There's woman, the symbol for woman, and then if you put two women beside each other, and then you put a roof on that symbol, okay. Mm-hmm. That symbol altogether means trouble. <laughs> so, so the good news is that some of your uh, imbalance with regards to this is perfectly normal. So that's the good news. Okay. The bad news is it's still there. Okay. Okay. So my guess is you are helping your wife's mother out, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And that's awesome. Right. So, at the very least, <laughs> is this a temporary situation or a long-term situation? Yeah, temporary. Temporary. And how long has it been? Six months. Six months. And how long was it supposed to be? About that long. About that long. Okay. And so now it's more. Or it's Correct. okay. How much more? Uh you know what? That hasn't been discussed yet, okay. so still don't know yet okay. to this point. All right. Don't know the details on that. Is your wife available to come on the call? No, she's at work. Oh, she's at work. Okay. So so that is one option I'm gonna offer you guys both to come on at another time. But Mm -hmm. since I'm only talking to you, I'm going to give you some tools Mm -hmm. to work with what is. Mm -hmm. And what is, is in this exact situation, exactly as it is, if nothing changed, Mm -hmm. and it doesn't sound like you actually have the power to make a change, unless you win the lottery and can buy a house to put her in, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. So so you are you can either look at this in one of two major ways. And one belief system is okay, enough's enough. I did your mom a favor. Um this is not my job. I don't deserve this. I work hard. I am a good husband and um I'm sorry, but we can't do this anymore. Um, I said six months and you're going to have to make some other arrangements. Okay. So that's one belief system or one road we can take. Okay. The consequences of that is what? Um, you know, potentially might be some hurt feelings and could be an aftermath, you know, of maybe a partial separation of some sort, you know, of, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I absolutely get yeah. what I'm saying. Do you hear what That's you're saying? That, that will be the consequences of, of, okay. of that decision. Do you want that? Not really, because I'm the type of person, you know, I'm, you know, I want the best for everybody. Right. You know, I want to see everybody uh, thrive, and I want to see everybody move forward in life, and, you know, definitely want to help out when I can. Right. You know, I don't want to seem like the... Uh, the bad guy. The negative person. Yeah, the bad right. guy. So right. Speak. Okay. So that road we don't want to go on. Right. Okay. 
So the other road to go on is, oh, I hate this. I'll do it. But I hate this. And I cannot wait until she's out of here. I resent this. It's not fair. I hope you know that I'm doing this for you. And there better be some payoff somewhere. You better remember this because I, you know, I'm sacrificing a lot for you and your mother. Okay. So there's another, which might be already kind of bubbling to the top. It's hard to hide that stuff. Okay. You have every right. You have every right to, to go down that road. Because in, you know, one sense of the word, that is the truth, right? You, right, right. You, you don't, you marry the woman, you don't necessarily marry the whole thing, right? Right. Let's <coughs> examine a, th- okay, so, so that, with that, what are the consequences of that? So the consequences of that is the mom stays, mm-hmm. and she's helped out, and the wife is sort of happy, okay? Mm-hmm. But you're miserable, and you are hating coming home. You are hating, you know, basically suffering through the next however long it is. And every day you're going to be saying, is it today? Is it tomorrow? When is it? When is it? When is it? And you're not going to be that fun to be around. Hmm. Accurate? Does that sound accurate? Oh, accurate. I thought you said factor it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, somewhat. <laughs> That's somewhat. I mean. I mean, you're probably, you know, you'll, you'll try about, to hide you know, The good thing it. about the whole situation is. Is that uh, she's not here a whole lot. Okay, good. So now we're going down the third road. <laughs> and this is the balanced road. And this is exactly what you did. You just took a tool call we called ICBW, which is it could be worse. Mm. Mm. You just took out of the tool bag unknowingly. You must be listening to my show at another time. <laughs> you must, you, you ha- just took that tool. It could be worse. And you took the, the positive side of a negative situation. You put on a silver lining to the life jacket that you're wearing in this particular situation. And you're saying, okay, and then here's another life tool. Okay. And the other life tool is, what is good about this situation? What is in this situation really, really good? And there's a lot good, and I'm going to start listing. Okay, you can write it down if you want. But you're going to use these things to pull into your head and into your mind every time you want to go down that other road, either of the other two roads. Okay, neither which one of them leads you to a feeling place, which is good. Neither one of those roads make you happy, correct? Mm -hmm, correct. Both of those roads are miserable for you and everybody around you, and they have severe consequences. So this choice of the road says, you know what? I'm going to find out. I'm going to plan things when she's not there. So I know she's not there a lot, and I know she has, you know, that weekly bingo or that weekly lunch with her mom or whatever it is. And I'm going to bring flowers home and I'm going to have a date with my wife and we're going to go to the bedroom and we're going to, you know, no holds barred. There's going to be no, you know, we don't need music or anything because she's not going to be there and we can do whatever we want. And that's going to be my party time. Right. All right. So there's one. The other thing is, isn't it wonderful that you are birthing and cultivating the natural compassion that you have already in you to become an amazing, caring son-in-law. Isn't it wonderful? You're a nice guy already, but wow, I'm doing super power strength, compassion and kindness. I am strengthening that quality about me so that I am, I'm going to be in the history books. You want a great son-in-law? I'm right there. And I'm doing this, and it makes me feel good. It makes me feel really good. It makes my wife feel good too, but it's not for my wife. I want to do this because it makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. Because it does. Right. And I don't need to be told that I'm great. 
because it just makes me feel good. I don't have to walk anybody across the street this week because I've done my fill <laughs> of anonymous good. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So when you start feeling a little bit resentful or unhappy or put upon, you just choose that third silver road and mm -hmm. say, you know, it isn't going to be together. It isn't going to be forever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is my time. And in some cultures, this is actually normal. So, right. you know, thank God <laughs> or thank the friendly universe that it's not an expectation. I just got right. told by my mom that in China, you know, it is the son's job to actually have the mom in the home. That's mm -hmm. their job. So right. Right. you don't live in that kind of culture. Right. So it could be worse. She could be there all the time. You know, the funny thing about it is, is that <clears throat> I don't mind it. It's just oftentimes it's just all, I think it's a uh, sometimes a personality conflict sometimes. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense? Yes. Uh, because, you know, I do believe that, you know, people can, can work together and move ahead and help each other out. That's what I'm all about. Right. But I think what makes it difficult <clears throat> at times is mindsets. Yes. Conflicted mindsets. <laughs> So, so here's some yeah. more tools. Here's some more tools to you. When you're playing in a tug of war, if you don't pick up your side of the rope, is there a war? No. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so your mm -hmm. mom's mom can't be feeling great herself, my mm -hmm. guess is. You know, she sounds like a, a strong woman who probably has a little bit of, you know, she wants to be able to stand on her own, too. This is yeah. probably not her ideal situation. So as much compassion and kindness that you can show for her, that when she strikes out, she's probably not in her best place. And that, you know, I'm just, you can, you can... um Try to make, find something funny about it and say, mm -hmm. does this make me the worst son-in-law ever? Right. And, you know, um, I can't, I can't, uh, you know, this is, this is not going to be forever. And I know that you're capable of taking care of yourself, but it's kind of nice having you around. And it's kind of nice having a referee here because then I don't have to admit that my wife's always right. It's kind of, mm -hmm. you know, just trying to find something mm -hmm. and then to have some compassion for your wife because she's mm -hmm. trying to, you know, have feet in both boats. So as much mm -hmm. as you can get into her boat mm -hmm. and celebrate and put some guidelines down, you know, that mm -hmm. there's a, you know, you, instead of paying for someone to help maintain the house, so glad that you are... Um, fulfilling a, a very important role in, in making our home nice while you're here. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she's doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if she's, and if she's not, then that's the time for you and your wife to come on with me because then there's also the side of agreements mm -hmm. and some parameters and some negotiations that, uh, you know, we're happy to do another six months and we've learned from this last six months and for both of us to have, you know, a very positive attitude about each other continue. Here's some of the hot buttons that I noticed are pushed on my end and let me know which hot buttons are pushed on your end so we can avoid them. And so you make a little agreement for the next six months. The primary thing is I, I promise you that if you shift your place and continue down this particular road where it could be worse and finding the good and seeing your mother-in-law as the oyster sees that grain of sand. You know, in mm. a, you know how oyster you know how oysters make pearls? Right. So your mother-in-law is your grain of sand. Mhm. Mm so you're making a pearl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're making a right. pearl. You're making a pearl necklace. 
can't really mm-hmm. go down that lane. But um, you're making a pearl necklace as a gift to yourself mm-hmm. and to your family. So that, yeah. <laughs> you know, if there's That's some good. Yeah. Thank you. There's some good that comes out of this particular <laughs> situation. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Right. Makes sense. Good. Any other Thank questions? You. No, that answers it. That you know, answers maybe another it. segment we could talk about, you know, siblings and things of that nature and possibly uh, rekindling, rekindling, you know, relationships that are distant, you know, mm. trying to get to the heart of that matter or something like that, you know, wondering, you know, why me and my siblings aren't as close as I would like to be, you know, mm. even if you reach out, you know, to them, you know, maybe that could be something that we could talk about at another day. Well, actually, I can give you a quick two minutes. Okay. So you can replay this so you don't have to record it down. So I'd like you to write a handwritten letter. Actually, email is the thing to do today. Okay. And um, dear sibling, um, I, it would, it would make my heart warm to have a closer relationship with you. I don't Mm. know if there's something that I have done or said in the past that has gotten in the way. If Mm. there has been, please let me know because I'd like to make it right. Mm. Know that I have not, that I have always appreciated. And then I want you to list eight things that you loved about them, that in your life together, bring back the best things that happened in your life together. I love the way that you made me feel better when someone picked on me at school. I love the way you always had my back when we blah, 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 blah. I love the way you would always make the best sandwiches for blah, blah, blah. I love the way. And just write eight things mm-hmm. that you appreciate about them. That's it. Okay, so two things. I want, okay. I want a better relationship. Uh, if there's anything I've done, let me know so I can make it right. And I appreciate this about you. I have not yet once seen a letter like that that has not worked. Uh, it worked. My mom had not talked to me for eight years. And I did a lot of forgiveness work. And I, you know, there was really no reason where I needed to ask forgiveness from her. But forgiveness was not about her. It was about me. And I wanted to have a relationship with her, no matter what had happened. And so I wrote that letter. And we have a relationship now, and I'm grateful for it. Well, wonderful. So there you go. You got a bonus. (laughs) All right. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So Larry from Sacramento, thank you for calling in and peace and blessings to you. Let me know what happens with your siblings. I expect to see uh, that letter written and out and a response probably within the month would be my guess. And then uh, uh, best with your family situation. So that is... Wow, that went fast. That is my um, another monthly. This was my August call in episode on Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get Balance with Dr. Marissa. And I am about to give one more thing away because it is my birthday episode. I am giving away my DVD, which is for those of you who have not taken a session with me. I know that many of you have. I created Balance Tai Chi Gong about seven years ago, and it's a combination of Tai Chi, Chi Gong, and a balance treatment that incorporates a lot of the ancient thought, new, ancient wisdom, new thought teachings out of Agape, and uh, put together a 28 minute moving meditation that promotes inner peace one breath at a time. And I do teach it on the beach. So please do sign up for a private lesson or you can uh, get this free DVD from me, personalized, or you can also get it online knowing that all of my balance offerings, uh, all the proceeds go to my piecework around the world. So that is all right now for the giveaways. Uh, Wrapping up with another couple balance bars where you get the menu of what I offer. First, because I'm now 
um, the Asian Oprah. I did the giveaways. And if you aren't already on the 21 day fast from complaining with Dr. Marissa, then please do join. It is a challenge to go 21 days in a row without complaining. And we are on day five. So every day I give a balance tip on my social media, 1600 plus on Facebook, uh, 1200 plus on LinkedIn. I don't know how many on Twitter and now on Instagram. So there's no reason to complain. Um, I'm on YouTube. I have the selection of the videos and then all of the balance tips are on my 52 card. Pick me up stacking the deck for life balance with Dr. Marissa. And you can win a pack of those motivational cards. If you do 21 days in a row, just email me and tell me you did. And I'll send a pack of those out. Um, today's balance tip is if the grass is greener on the other side, water your own lawn. Yeah. Envy doesn't look good. A lot of our complaints stem from, well, he has, or she has. And so if there's something that you want, look at your own side of the street. Am I doing everything possible to make that happen? And if you're not, usually we aren't, we can watch one less reality show and take that hour and explore some creative side of ourselves that is waiting to be birthed. So that's it for today's tip on the roll. And we already did the uh, announcement for the Asian Heritage Society. Thank you again. And that's it for today's call-in show. Next week, you will not want to miss Brenda Williams, a five-star life coach, which was one of, she was on my panel for embracing your life and feeding your soul that I presented at the Global Women's Conference down at the, I believe it was the Hilton, uh, Disneyland Hilton. Last month, they're all, <laughs> all the conferences are melding together. But uh, uh, she's going to be on with me next week. So you won't want to miss that. But you have a couple more chances to ask your friends to tune in this week for the uh, call in episode. Then we had a great time with Ardella from San Diego and Larry from San Francisco. Thanks again to my assistant producer today, Jarvis Essex, who lines them up. If you would like to be a caller, because I am the kinder, gentler Dr. Laura, I do not make you wait at the switchboard and we try to have you scheduled in. So please do contact Jarvis at my website. You can put in uh, Jarvis, put me on the air and uh, he will get that email and get in touch with you. So thank you again for tuning in. This has been another shot of Take My Advice. I'm not using it get balanced with dr marissa pay that's p for positive e i and remember it's all about balance peace in and peace out Heart in a cage.